Rod, I know there was a lot of talk about the game about uh, Saturday night about the officiating. Mm. Brett Yarmark was there, the conference commissioner. Uh, I will say this, uh, having done the in-game watch and you know analyzed every play, play-by-play, I, I do think it was a block in the back on Keaton Crawford on the Xavier Worthy punt return. I mean, you and I talked about that. You were passionate about it. He, the fact that he pushed him in the back yeah, led to the penalty. Up. Yeah, put his hands up. and as you, you have to do, you put your hands up, man. And the proper training there is just a shield, right? Hands, hands up, up, right? Yeah. You, you don't have to. You don't. You, there's no need for you to put your hands up on him when you, like you said, just put your body up against him. Well, and the guy kind of turned on him, right? I mean, he was coming down to block him, and he was the gunner. And as they got together, the the the, the defender turned, which put his back to him. But then, don't push him. Yeah. Right, but, as you say, just put your hands up and shield them. You see that all the time. I mean, it's not like that's a new technique. No. I mean, Coach Aquino was teaching that when I was playing. And you saw Jeff Banks go over to him later and tell him, hey, man, we've, we've talked about this. You know, in that position, you don't have to put your hands on them because by the letter of the law, you put your hands on their back, that's a block in the back. If I just put my chest on your back, how is that a block in the back? Yeah. <laughs> my body is just blocking your body. It's not necessarily a block it's in like the back. It's like a pick. Yeah, exactly. And then, first of all, and show them your hands. Show your hands like, hey, ref, I am doing no harm here. All right? I'm just here. I'm a, foot, I'm a football player. I'm an obstacle in this uh, defender's way. But I am not blocking. I have, and I have as much rights to this space yes, as he exactly. does. Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm just an obstacle here. He might run me over. I'm not being aggressive, and I'm not touching him. You can do that. You see guys do it all the time. And he's a smart enough football player. He's a veteran, savvy enough. He knew, like I should have, in that moment, I had, I had a chance to make that determination, and that's when you make it. Basically, my rule was if I see the player, if I see the, 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 the obviously the defender, because at that time I'm a blocker on punt return or whatever it is, if I see him and he's facing me, then I can put my hands on him if I see his face. Because then I'm face up with him. I'm head up with him, right? <laughs> face to face. And then I can I can put my hands on him to engage. But if I can't see his face, meaning I just see his, the side of him, the profile, or his back, then I got to go shield. I got to go block. And hell, Coach Aquino, every time say, block, hey, you know what? Block their back with your back. Turn your back on them. Yeah. Doesn't matter. You can look at our look at our corner and put your hands up. Doesn't matter. They can't call you on that. Yeah. What are you going to call you? Blocking them with your back? <laughs> and so, block him in the back with your back. And that was discouraging because <laughs> it was a great punt return. The rest of the uh, group did a great job, and uh, X Man took it to the house. And uh, that was one of two touchdowns taken off by penalties, which had Longhorn fans frustrated. The other one on Kelvin Banks on the hold, I do think he reached out and grabbed up under his shoulder pad. Mm-hmm. He didn't block him initially, or he didn't hold him initially. But as as he started to disengage, and Quinn Ewers rolled to his left, and eventually threw the touchdown pass to Ad Mitchell. He did reach out and uh, kind of grab up under his shoulder pad and yeah, give did. him a tug yep. and slowed his momentum, which, again, you're going to get called for that. Was it ticky-tack? I don't know, but he held him. So I can't get mad at the officials for those two calls. I did think there were a couple out-of-bounds plays where Iowa State got a step and then hit you know, did J.T. Sanders play on the sidelines. And then uh, right, right after that, there appeared to be a late hit out-of-bounds that wasn't called. But you know, with Brett Yormark there and when you got to halftime and Texas had six penalties, you know, two touchdowns off the board, and they had zero penalties you know the only penalty Iowa State had deep into the third quarter was that when remember when on the reviewed play where they stepped out of bounds the receiver caught the ball and then they went mm-hmm. to review it and saw that he had stepped out of bounds yep. which made him an ineligible receiver that's a penalty mm-hmm. and they, they got declined so it, that was the only flag on them but look this is where I, I really like the character of this Texas football team much like we saw at Alabama remember when they and you know Iowa State's not Alabama but a hostile environment their only true road games there was adversity in the Alabama game too Rod Yep. where they dropped some balls and felt like they should have had a bigger lead and uh, things maybe weren't going their way. And then they actually gave up the lead in the second half at Alabama. This team stays strong, and you've talked about that all year. This team stays mentally focused. They're not perfect. I mean, maybe Georgia at this point is the only team that is building towards perfect, like a really, really good football team in all phases. Uh, Texas still has their challenges, but they're gritty. Uh, they have high football character, as you talk about, and they found a way to, to weather that and, and really – you know, because again, they, if Xavier Worthy doesn't fumble the ball going in on that end around, you know, Texas scored on two of their last three possessions of the first half, uh, and then that fumble happened, and that prevented another score. Then they had two taken off the board by by penalties, mm-hmm. but the second half, as you talked about with Sark and the game planning, they really, I thought, took control of the game. And you know, the one, you know, Iowa State had one good drive uh, after Texas took a 13-3 lead, and then they had the pop pass fourth down play, which caught Texas by surprise, and. Other than that, Texas really controlled the second half of that football game.